Mary Jane is high garbage. Now, look, I like the Spider-Man trilogy. It can be pretty funny and an absolute blast to just sit through. But the only thing that can make these movies absolutely unbearable is Peter's love life with Mary Jane. Hey guys, my name is DJ, and before anything, I want to reiterate something. I typically do like watching a superhero having to deal with the struggles of his secret identity. I do enjoy watching a superhero having to go back and forth figuring out how to balance the superhero life with normal life in a healthy way, which for some characters can be very difficult. And even in the trilogy, Peter Parker having to balance his life is kind of fun to watch. In fact, it's kind of what makes Spider-Man 2 so great. But holy hell is it annoying to watch him struggle with MJ. She is just so boring and kind of an indecisive moron. The cute redhead next door is absolutely abysmal to watch. Don't believe me? Well, why not go through her entire life in the Spider-Man trilogy. And I think you're gonna find that most of it consists of the fact that she can't make up her damn mind. The entire character arc of MJ when looking through all of the movies in the trilogy is just... It's just so bad. In Spider-Man 1, she goes from maybe dating Flash Thompson? I mean, it is kinda hinted at, but there's no real confirmation of this. So, I'm gonna kinda mention him just in case. Anyways, from maybe dating Flash to trying to date Peter, to kissing Spider-Man for saving her life like the dirty sinner that she is, then she is being rejected by Peter and subsequently Spider-Man due to him being the superhero, which, okay, that kind of makes sense. And if you look at her arc in each individual movie, it kind of does make sense, at least in the confines of the singular film. But not when looking at the whole scope of the series, which will continue with Spider-Man 2. In this movie, after being rejected by Peter in the first film, MJ then gets rejected again in the beginning of the movie after trying to give him the old smoochie woochy. Oh boy, yeah. So, since she can't have Peter, what exactly does she decide to do? Well, why not go and date the son of his boss? Then, afterwards, why not decide to literally marry that son after being in a huge fight with Peter? Which, I don't know about you, but doesn't that seem kind of fishy? Now, sure, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she did actually love John Jameson enough to marry him. But from an outsider's perspective, watching Mary Jane decide to marry John right after being in this huge fight with Peter, you know, the guy who she kind of seems to have a total crush on, it's kind of a bit off-putting. I almost kind of just want to see an alternate scene to this. Because as far as I can tell, MJ probably wouldn't have said yes to the proposal if not for the argument with Peter. Or what if Peter actually did exactly what he told her he was gonna do? What if he actually made it to one of her plays and actually got to sit there and watch her? Would she have still been so mad? I mean, the argument wouldn't have happened considering that's exactly what the whole thing stemmed from. So would she have actually said yes to the proposal? Or would her feelings for Peter still blossom because of this? I don't know, that's kind of just speculation. It's all up for you to decide, really. I'm just the guy asking the questions. Anyways, after she actually does say yes, to John Jameson's proposal, she decides, hey, why don't I do the whole upside down Spider-Man kiss with my husband? Which makes even less sense. She went from wanting to be with Peter, then Spider-Man, then Peter again, then John Jameson, then kind of Spider-Man again in her fantasies. I mean, she can't make up her damn mind. Wait. Didn't I already say that? Hmm. Anyway, she then went out to a restaurant with Peter. Because that makes sense. And of course, she then asks him to kiss her at the restaurant. Because why wouldn't she? Like she's literally the fiance to John Jameson, and she's trying to have a makeout session with Peter Parker. Just, ugh. At least she gets kidnapped by Doc Ock in the next scene to make me feel better about this situation. Now we follow Spidey's adventures to MJ, who is being held captain in a little building over the river by Doc Ock. 
And through the fight, she realizes that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and thus her two crushes merge into one as though they were the Wonder Twins. Then, after Peter saves MJ, just like how he did in the first movie, she then decides to change her mind again. MJ decides that she just wants to be with that hot Peter Parker slash Spider-Man combo, and what does she do? Oh yeah, she doesn't cancel the wedding. No, that would be sensible. Um, she decides to leave John Jameson at the altar. Like, holy crap, imagine how he feels right now. He just gets left at the altar by the love of his life because MJ can't seem to make up her goddamn mind. He stands there at the altar, heartbroken and embarrassed in front of her and his entire family because she is too heartless to just cancel the wedding and instead just freaking leaves just oh my god <sighs> anyway she then goes on to talk to peter parker standing in her wedding dress because she is just so goddamn cold-blooded and heartless that in my canon now i believe john jameson should have been taken over by the venom symbiote so that he could be the venom symbiote and finally get his freaking revenge on peter and mj Ugh. All I'm saying is John Jameson should have been the villain in Spider-Man 3. And through this conversation, she tells Peter that she accepts his life as Spider-Man. She doesn't care that being with him is a massive risk in that she loves him. Which, aw, isn't that sweet? What a moment for MJ. So Mary Jane and Peter Parker go on together with MJ fully understanding the dangers of dating Spider-Man and deciding that true love conquers all, right? Right? Ugh, I guess not. I guess it's time to talk about everybody's favorite Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man 3. So MJ and Peter do seem pretty happy in the beginning. They are both on a lovely little web hammock looking up at the stars incredibly in love and it's all so sweet. But you know what happens next? Peter then decides to kiss Gwen Stacy for no freaking reason. Like, god damn it, Peter, have you learned nothing from MJ's actions? So she's understandably pretty angry. Good. That actually it does make sense. Okay, Peter, that was a bad thing you did. That was wrong. But Spider-Man and Peter Parker aren't particularly the main reason she's mad. I mean, it's a part of it, the Gwen Stacy kiss, sure, that was, that was dumb, but MJ then works herself into a frenzy. Now remember a few moments ago when I said that MJ finally realizes that being with Spider-Man will be difficult, and how she decides to go with it anyways because she does love him? Well, I guess she doesn't, because she literally gets annoyed at Peter for being Spider-Man, which is so dumb, because she is the one that decided to be with him after LEAVING JOHN JAMESON AT THE ALTAR! Like, oh my god, what is this shit? Hashtag justice for John Jameson. Anyways, Peter and MJ finally have a big fight because of course they do. Peter then proceeds to be an asshole, but this is through the Venom symbiote, so it actually makes sense, by embarrassing her at the bar with Gwen Stacy. Oh, and then he hits her! Hell yeah, Peter, good job on you, doing something that I really wish I could do. But following this, he realizes that this outrage is because of the Venom symbiote, so he decides to go take it off. Through this, Eddie Brock goes on to obtain the Venom powers and kidnaps MJ. So Peter goes on to save MJ because Spider-Man's got a Spider-Man. Oh, and also, through this kidnapping, Harry Osborn dies. Not that that's really MJ's fault, but she's kind of a part of the scene, so it, I, I, I just thought I should put that in there. <laughs> Anyways, they then cry, they go to his funeral, and I guess it's implied that Peter and MJ have a heart-to-heart -heart of some kind. Because then, the final scene of the trilogy, just to kick me in the balls that one last time, is Peter and MJ slow dancing at the club. And that's the conclusion of MJ's time in the trilogy, and... Oh my god, I hate her so much. She is so indecisive over who she loves, it's actually ridiculous. She really is a one-woman army destroying everything she touches. MJ tries to date Peter on multiple occasions, even when he tells her no. 
she breaks John Jameson's heart by leaving him to be embarrassed at the altar on what is meant to be his wedding day, and after finally being with Peter, she is still unsatisfied because she's mad that Spider-Man is never around. Ugh, people like to think that Spider-Man 3 is the worst part of the entire trilogy, but I beg to differ. That moniker, at least to me, does not lie in a whole movie, but rather one single character over the entire trilogy. My least favorite redhead from next door, Mary Jane Watson. Anyways, that's gonna have to be the end of this video here. Did you guys like it? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more of my over-analytic and dorky content, why not check out this video here? And while you're staring at this outro screen, why not click this little subscribe button? Anyways, hope you have a good day, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye! Yo.